I'm going to briefly discuss um, the einstein podolsky rosen uh, theorem or paradox, if you like, generally known as EPR, um, and a brief overview of Bell's theorems. Please note that this is not um, rigorous or in-depth at all. It's just designed to give you an idea of the basic physics behind what's going on. So let's start by considering uh, two spin-a-half particles. I'll just rewrite that W. So we've got two spin-a-half particles, um, which we are going to join together um, to make a single, um, let's say, s equals zero state. Now, the reason we're choosing s equals zero is because that then means that we're definitely in the singlet. Um, and so we would write the combined wave function capital Psi of 1, comma 2 um, is 1 over root 2. Um, I'm going to put square brackets in. And I'm going to use slightly unorthodox notation. I normally use bras and kets, but here I'm just going to write alpha of 1, beta of 2, minus beta 1, alpha 2. Um, I hope that's clear. What's happening here is we're putting either particle 1 into the spin-up state and particle 2 into the spin-down state, um, or vice versa. Um, and having done that, we then separate the particles. Um, and we separate them in a particular way. We, can t we keep them isolated from the environment. Um, that means that there is no way for the particles to lose coherence, um, and they retain their singlet state. Um, once we've done that, we measure the spin um, along the z-axis for one particle. Um, we measure s, z, hat, um, let's say for particle 1. Um, and at this point, you might, uh, for instance, assume that you've got one of the particles in a lab, say, in London, um, and another one in Geneva. Um, of course, you can do them closer than that. You can do them further apart than that. Um, when we measure the spin for S, Z for particle 1, we're going to get one of two results. We're going to get H bar over 2 or minus H bar over 2, spin up or spin down. We know that um, because of the initial preparation, and we know that we're going to get that with equal probability. Um, it's a 50-50 mix. Um, now, what happens here is what really bothered Einstein and a lot of other physicists who um, are unhappy with quantum mechanics. Having made that measurement, we have now changed um, the result of measuring particle 2. Um, so particle 2, we now know, will have 100% um, probability of the opposite spin. So by measuring particle 1, we have changed the probabilities of a measurement on particle 2. If you think about this, before we made the measurement on particle 1, we knew that the probability of getting spin up on particle 2 was 50%, and the probability of getting spin down on particle 2 was 50%. And so by doing a measurement, say, in London, we have changed the probabilities of a measurement in Geneva, again, assuming that. This upset a lot of people um, and has given a rise to a huge amount of um, theory. This, in fact, tells us that quantum mechanics is a non-local theory. Now, I'm going to just change to the next page. Um, so let's just note that quantum mechanics is non-local. In other words, the result oops, of a measurement um, in one place can affect measurement in another place. Um, Einstein didn't like this. Many other people don't like this. And people have frequently introduced what is known as um, hidden variable theories to try and remove this problem or to try and find a different explanation. Um, the idea behind a hidden variable theory is that the probabilities of quantum mechanics that we observe um, are actually controlled by some variable we don't know about. Um, and the key point here is, should that be a local or a non-local variable, those people that find quantum mechanics unsatisfying always insist that a hidden variable theory should be local. And this is where Bell comes in. So the point about a local theory is that there should be some variable um, which was created when um, the, sin the singlet system was created. Um, so the local variable was determined when we created the, sp the singlet. Um, and that is what controls the collapse, the results of the, the measurements um, when s equals 0 was created. 
Um, and what Bell did was he created a series of thought experiments, a series of measurements, um, to demonstrate that actually you couldn't have a local hidden variable theory. So let's just discuss this um, in a little bit of detail. I'm not going to give a full derivation. That's available um, in the notes if you're taking my quantum mechanics course. It's also available in various textbooks. So essentially what we're going to say is we're going to measure particle 1 um, along an axis, um, let's say, A. Um, please note that's a unit vector. We're going to measure particle 2 um, along B. Um, and you can show, though I'm not going to do the math, that the expectation value, um, which we will write as E of A, B, because it's going to depend on those axes, is equal to minus H bar squared over 4 cos of phi, um, where phi is the angle between A and B. Um, and you can just check that that fits your expectation um, by setting phi to equal 90, um, and then you end up with um, a zero there. If you set phi to equal zero so that the two spins are anti-parallel, because remember, if you've got one up, you can have the other one down, then you get exactly what you would expect. So that, that matches. Um, and it's a fairly simple piece of maths and geometry to show that. Now, what Bell's inequalities do, um, and I'm going to describe one of them, um, is to think about measuring, so there's Bell's inequalities, um, those particles, those pairs of particles, along three axes. Um, so we're looking at correlations between these three um, different measurements. Now, those three measurements um, are going to be along A, B, and C. Okay, so you might measure along A and B, you might measure along A and C, you might measure along B and C. Um, and what Bell showed was that for a local theorem, a local hidden variable theorem, um, having done those sets of measurements... Um, sorry, that's getting a bit messy. I'll just rewrite that. Um, here's a local theorem. It requires that um, the expectation value, or the modulus of the following expectation value, E of A, comma B, minus E of A, comma C, Okay, so we're measuring the first particle both times along A, we're measuring the second particle along B and C, so you take the modulus of that expectation value and you subtract off um, E of B and C. Um, and for a local hidden variable theory, that must be less than or equal to 1. Um, so you can derive that by thinking about distributions and seeing how things depend on distributions on the local variable. Um, it's very easy to show that actually this is broken. Um, so if you consider um, A and C coplanar um, with B, and you make B bisect the angle between A and C, um, then you can immediately find that this um, inequality is violated. There are many other situations when you can do it. So this is a simple demonstration. I haven't derived the theorem, but I've shown you what that is. Um, and it shows that you cannot replace um, the results of quantum mechanics with a single local, i.e. dependent only on one point in space, hidden variable theory. Um, of course, things are much more complex than that. There are various people who've introduced um, rather more complex questions. Does it matter when you choose which directions you measure along? This kind of thing. Um, and... In all cases, so far, we have yet to see any evidence of Bell's inequalities being, being obeyed. Therefore, in every case, we find that quantum mechanics is non-local. Um, and we just have to accept that perhaps the universe is more probabilistic than we would otherwise like. Let me emphasize, um, this is not meant to be a rigorous introduction to any of the quantum mechanics going on here. That is rather more complex than I can explain in a 10-minute video.